you're faced with an option. Kill a rival gang member's family or be killed. And once you're in, there's no way out. These are the 10 most brutal gang initiation rituals. Number 10. Eating Human Heart – The Knights Templar 2016, when the former Pope of the Catholic Church, Pope Benedict XVI, wanted to visit a town in Mexico, the Knights Templar cartel put up more than 10 banners on different bridges, claiming they wouldn't engage in any form of violence while he was in their country. They did this because they attribute themselves to Christianity, and even use different symbols related to Catholicism in their affairs. Their leaders call themselves Knights. And they started off as a vigilante group for another cartel, La Familia Michoacana. The Knights Templar is a cartel that operates out of Michoacan, Mexico. And over the years, they managed to dip their hands in every crime going on in the country. But before I tell you about their initiation ritual, just brace yourself, because this might make you want to puke. Prospects who wish to join the Knights Templar are required to eat the human heart of a recently deceased human, mostly a woman or yeah, anyways. So every member must first embrace cannibalism, and we believe this is done to prepare these prospects for dark things done within the cartel. Dark things like ripping out the insides of murdered victims for display or liquefying of human flesh. They are one of the less known cartels in Mexico, but these guys are just as dangerous as the guys on top. Number 9. Beating with a bag of hair. The Freemasons. When you hear the word Freemasons, your mind probably starts racing around the numerous TikToks about them trying to take over the world. And while I can't really confirm nor deny the many conspiracy theories surrounding this group, their initiation rituals are particularly what irritate me. One of their numerous rituals includes prospects lying dead on the floor while Freemasons beat them with a bag of hair. Another initiation ritual on the female side of the association includes females showing their left breast. Some other rituals include explanatory lectures that revolve around the construction of the Temple of Solomon and the artistry and death of the chief architect, Aram Abif, who attained the highest rank under Freemasonry. Other rituals depend on the degree a member attains in the organization. There are three degrees attainable. One is the Entered Apprentice, two is the Fellow Craft, and three is the Master Mason. As prospects make their way up, the rituals change. They also gain more knowledge about the truth and morals surrounding their affairs. But as we know, there are different levels in Freemasonry, and many of the things they do are quite secretive. Number 8. Buck 50. The Bloods One of the largest and most well-known gangs in the world is the United Blood Nation, or the Bloods as everyone calls them. This gang is one of the few predominantly black gangs in the world, and there's a reason for that. It all started in a Los Angeles prison, where Latin gang members kept attacking and killing African American inmates. So to retaliate, they formed a deadly group. And from there, they expanded their operations to include drug trafficking, armed robbery, and murder. They also got very vicious when a similar gang, the Crips, dominated the narcotics trade in Los Angeles. But how vicious do they get? Well, let their initiation ritual do the talking. For a prospect to be a member of the Blood, they must carry out what is known as a buck 50. This involves using a buck cutter knife to slice a random victim's face to the point where it requires 150 stitches. Just imagine walking home and ending up in this sadistic situation. Another thing about this gang is that their prospects are usually African American high school teenage boys who end up joining the gang without having any idea of what they're really getting into. And even if they do, the consequences are sometimes more than the reward. Number 7. Steal a Car – The Crips Just like their number one rivals, the Bloods, Crips also originated in LA back in the 80s. They're also dominated by African Americans living in the US. The Crips are always known to wear blue, and members are not allowed to wear red. While on the other hand, Blood members aren't allowed to wear blue. This is a part of those rituals between the two gangs, but when it comes to the major initiation ritual, the Crips may not at first sound as brutal as the Bloods. Prospects are required to either steal a car or steal a car and then kill the owner. It all depends on what the older members of the gang assign to a specific prospect. Some would say the advantage of being in either the Crips or the Bloods as an African American is that they can get a source of income, even if it entails yielding a gun and selling a few pounds of coke on the streets. 
Again, teenage high school boys are usually the target of these gangs, with many of them ending up dead or behind bars. Number 6. Bathing in Feces – Hells Angels The Hells Angels are a recognized motorcycle club around the world. You might know them by their famous leather jackets and logo, which includes a skull with wings wearing a leather jacket. But contrary to what you know, their motorcycle association is a mere cover for their contributions to the underworld of crime. But first, what does it take to be a member of this gang? Now, there are three different tales of what really goes down in their initiation process, but I'll feed you guys all the details. New members are stripped of their clothes and handed a piece of their signature leather jacket. Then all the other members of the gang in that district are instructed to pee and poop in a bowl. While that's happening, the prospects are tied to a chair, a wall, or anything firm just to make sure the ritual is fulfilled to the max. Then the irritating excreted mixture is poured all over the prospects and their jackets, and they're not allowed to wash that off till the ritual's over. Some even say they aren't ever allowed to wash off their jackets. So they'll always be moving around smelling like a pile of dump. But apart from this specific ritual, a Hells Angel doesn't initiate prospects who have been convicted as child molesters and also prospects who have previously tried to be recruited by the police department. Number 5. Clinical Beatdown – MS-13 Mara Salvatruzza, also known as MS-13, is an international criminal gang that originated in Los Angeles by Salvadoran immigrants in the US. It all started with a bunch of Salvadoran immigrants coming together to protect themselves from the harsh living in LA. Then after a few years, other rival gangs came to LA and they clashed, leading MS-13 to become a violent crime syndicate. Over the years, they've gotten involved with everything, from drug trafficking to armed robbery and then to institution. And when it comes to being a member, things just get uglier. The initiation ritual for MS-13 is different for both men and women. A man is subjected to a ritual called get jumped in, then walk the line. What this basically means is that the prospect will get beat up by five of the strongest MS-13 members in that district. It's as brutal as a typical no-holds-bar in a WWE match, but unlike WWE, this is not acting. Some say this beatdown lasts only 13 seconds, which I can't confirm nor deny, but if the prospect manages to stay alive after the beatdown, then they need to complete the second part of the initiation, which is to beat or even murder an innocent victim. If they do this and succeed, then they are officially a member. But for the ladies, five of the heftiest gang members under her district would have to, let's just say, take turns. They're allowed to use force, so if she survives this, she becomes a member. Number 4. 18th Second Beatdown – The 18th Street Gang The 18th Street Gang is another gang operating out of LA, California. They're less involved with drugs and more involved with other crimes like car theft, armed robbery, and assassination. The gang's organized in such a way it allows for leadership at every level. And when it comes to women being a member, well, let's just say that's a story not suitable for YouTube. But anyways, their initiation ritual is very similar to that of the MS-13 street gang. And here's how. To be a member, prospects or initiates are subjected to an 18-second beatdown by the toughest and strongest members of the gang. And yeah, you might think 18 seconds is a very short period of time, but keep in mind that during this beatdown, the other members are allowed to use weapons that aren't sharp objects. So a single strike with a baton or a hammer is enough to bruise the prospect for life. And if the prospect is still alive after this beatdown, then they officially become a member of the gang. Number 3. Burn a Cross – Ku Klux Klan You've heard about them and probably seen them in movies, but who are they really? The Ku Klux Klan, also known as the KKK, is a white supremacist, right-wing terrorist and homophobic group originating in the US. Their primary targets are African Americans, Hispanics, Jews, Latinos, Asian Americans, Catholics, as well as immigrants and homosexuals. They are one of the very few gangs that don't get involved in the trafficking of narcotics, and that's because the goal of this group is focused somewhere else. So what does it take to be a member of the KKK? Well, first off, you have to be white. I mean, it's practically impossible for any other race to join this group. That would just be sealing your own fate. But when a prospect passes the white checkbox, they're told to burn a crucifix, one of the most frowned upon acts in the US. 
However, most predominantly white families in the U.S. that are part of the KKK make it compulsory for their family members to join the group, thereby keeping their family name alive. Number 2. Umbrella Question – The Numbers Going all the way over to Africa, we have one of the most brutal gangs on the continent, The Numbers. The root of this gang goes way back to the 80s in a prison located at KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa where inmates came together with the sole aim of protecting themselves. But as the years went by, this South African prison gang has grown beyond being just that. It's now arguably the biggest criminal organization in the whole of Africa. And to understand their insane initiation ritual, you need to first be aware of the structure of the organization. For starters, the organization is divided into three sections. Each section is denoted by a number. 26s, 27s, and 28s. The 26s are the ones responsible for smuggling drugs in and out of South Africa. The 27s are involved in sex trafficking and pimping girls in the country, while the 28s are the muscle of the organization. They're the ones responsible for executing anyone wanted dead by their leaders. Now, the initiation ritual of the numbers is based on one simple question, and the answer gotten from this question decides the fate of the initiate and which section of the gang they'll be sent to. The question is this. What will you do if you're under the rain, holding an umbrella, and another gang member's there without an umbrella? If the initiate says the typical answer of sharing their umbrella, they're sent to section 27 to be sex trafficked. But if they say they'll stand in the rain with the other member, they'll move on to the next stage, which involves the beating of a police officer and showing no remorse while the officer struggles to stay alive. At this stage, the leaders of the organization then decide on the appropriate section to insert the new member. And number one, blood and oath, the Chinese triad. When it comes to the Chinese triad, prospects are either initiated successfully or killed on the spot. The Chinese triad is one of the oldest criminal organizations in Asia. Its history dates back to the 18th century. The organization was initially created to take down the Qing dynasty, but as the years went by, it expanded into drug trafficking, gambling scandals, prostitution, and the illegal sale of adult films. And as expected, they branched out of China and into Taiwan, Hong Kong, and other countries. They based their belief on the Chinese mythology that sees the union of heaven, earth, and water. But their rituals involve something thicker than water, and that's blood. When a prospect chooses to become a member of the Chinese triad, an animal is sacrificed. It could be a pig, a goat, or a chicken. And the blood of this animal is poured into a chalice. Then the blood of other triad members and the blood of the prospect is taken and poured into this chalice. If the prospect then refuses to drink this, they are killed on the spot. But if they do, they're automatically a member of the Brotherhood. A brotherhood that has been standing for decades now. And as they drink that bloody mixture, they're mandated to chant this. If a member of this society finds himself in difficulty, all will rush to his aid. If I, as a future member of this association, break this oath, the swords will descend and kill me. As the initiate says this, they pass beneath an arch of swords. And the moment they're done, the paper on which the oaths are written will be burnt on the altar. This is to confirm the member's obligation to perform his duties to the gods. New members are sometimes used to carry out the dirty work for the organization, but as they progress, they make their way into the corporate world of the crime syndicate, joining other members in their perfectly organized money laundering scheme with billion dollar Asian companies. So would you say joining the Chinese triad is worth the reward?